Hello Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing a video, if you haven't noticed in my last few videos, I don't have my camera working right now, just having some driver issues that I've just been lazy on, so you don't have to look at my ugly mug for a few videos at least. Um, so yeah, today we're actually going to be doing a Python, and we're going to be doing some web scraping, uh, getting basically the HTML, so this is going to be our Python. I'm using, I know most times I use Notepad++, but today I'm going to be using uh, VS Code, VS Studio. <clears throat> just because, I don't know, I like using Python here, but I like using AutoHockey and Notepad++, just because that's what I'm used to from a previous job, and it just became habit. So, here is the website to which we will be looking at. So, this is just a project page with different things. As you see, I like using this one because Tab Nation is actually on here, along with a few others, and then there's some other stuff, logos, motion design, kind of like logos or whatever. So I, I'm going to use this one um, just because it's simple, it's easy, Tab Nation's on there. I don't want to spit out too much HTML for this demo, so this should be a pretty decent balance there. Uh, so yeah. So the first thing, go to your website, you're going to want to get the URL, because we're going to need that, obviously. And yeah, let's take a look at the code, shall we? So first thing we're going to have Python is import request. If you're used to auto hotkeys, that's the same thing. You're importing a library. In Python, they call it modules. Same diff, right? Same thing, same diff. Now, if you, for some reason, throw an error when you run your coast, or code and it can't find request or like beautiful soup are two of them you're ne going to need if for some reason they're not installed on your computer all you got to do is open command prompt and you're going to use something like this <clears throat> so let me show you that don't know why my computer's going so slow probably because i'm recording and here you're just going to put in that pip uh install Push enter. Pip is not recognized. That's because I accidentally had that hashtag in there. Obviously, you need pip on your computer. So you're going to do pip install. I'm not going to do that just because I already have it. But you push enter. It'll do a bunch of stuff. Have some bars. And then it'll tell you when it's done. But we're good. We don't need to install it. It's already on my computer. I don't want to mess something up. Stuff can go wonky when you least expect it. So yeah, that's other code. Don't worry about that. And don't ignore the title of this as it says import speech recognition. That's actually another video that I had decided not to do. So I just replaced the code because I was being lazy. Don't be lazy like me. So we're going to import that so that we have access to all that code from BS4. <laughs> BS. Uh, Beautiful Soup 4, you know, whatever version you're using or whatever, you might have to change that if you have an older version. Or you should update. I'm not sure what the current one is. I would assume it's 4 because I'm pretty sure I update my stuff pretty frequently. But if it had a new one in the last you know, few weeks, maybe not. Import beautiful soup. So we're importing basically all that functionality there, functions. So here's where you're going to paste your URL of the website you're looking at. Specifically, you know, like the portfolio page, you know, whatever. So you put whatever website you want there. And that's going to be saved as the variable, just URL, really simple stuff. So our response, uh, well, let's start at down here. So we're taking our URL now that we had. What was that little dot? Go away. URL, we're doing request get. That's just saying, you know, we're going to try to get that. What's the response from the website? Because we did a re uh, request get, dot get. Make sure you put that dot there. Our next one is we want to grab the entire... Uh, website's content, whatever the response was that I got. Uh, so the response and the content specifically. And so we're going to save that as the variable HTML. Next, we're going to jump down. And right here, we'll start at the end. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and we're going to be taking, you know, what was our answer that we got? What was the content we got? And we want to run it through Beautiful Soup's HTML Phraser. Um, so that's going to go through there. Uh, you know, we're saying beautiful soup, use that functionality. And whatever the response is, uh, result, save that as just soup. Then we're going to do uh, soup prettify. 
if you don't know what that means, it's sometimes when you grab, you know, not just HTML, but any type of code that's not indented or, you know, the syntax is, it doesn't look good. You know, I call it to the code coding, uh, to the code, to the wall coding is what I call it. So, uh, for example, let me see if I can find something here. Uh, so to the wall coding, like this is good. This looks clean. I mean, there's a two different, a few different ways people do this. You know, some people will tab over here uh, when they're in brackets. Uh, but if, but to the wall coding would be basically all your entire code is to the wall. So like even this would be over here. That doesn't look great. Now, if you ever do find code like that, there are websites out there where you can run it through based on whatever thing. But this one's going to do it for you, so you don't even have to open a Beautify or a Prettify website. They mean the same thing. People just different terminology. And then print. Print just means kind of like in AutoHockey, send. Uh, most languages, a lot of them at least, use print. It just means like display, you know, whatever the result, uh, final formatting result, that kind of stuff was. So this is going to display in our console. Uh, I don't have my console open right now, but that's fine. We're going to go up here to the little run Python file. Click that. So it automatically opens a terminal. Depending on how much content it got, what it has to do, it can be a little bit slow. So there we go. It's, uh, it's done. And we know it's done when our file path right here shows again. That's not part of the response. That's a new line saying, okay, what do you want to type here next? We're looking at the stuff that starts with that. And let me actually enlarge this because we don't really need to look at the code anymore. But yeah, here's all the HTML. Uh, so go back up to the top. Yeah, so here's where we're kind of starting. That's our start there, what type of document it is. And it's going down so we can do stuff where maybe we need to find certain information no results is it one it might not have grabbed that information because it might not be in the html that's fine uh, but you can see you know stuff like there's images in here and whatnot uh you know uh dark mode so you can get all that information this website requires javascript to work um, so yeah there's a lot of information out there after once you get this that you could do. Maybe you're uh, trying to run it through and find all the IDs of certain things. You could, you know, copy and paste this into another program to have it filter out all the information you actually are looking for or clean it up. You know, and as you see, it is indented in all the proper places. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. So, yeah, if you guys found this video interesting, let me know in the comments or give me a like in case you want me to expand on this. Even let me know what maybe you want to expand uh, with this. Uh, just out of curiosity. So, this is kind of a very basic intro, very simple code. You can change your variables to whatever you want as long as they match. You know, if you change it here, change it there, or you're going to get weird results or none at all. All right, guys, I will see you all on the next one.